And one, of course, big thing, Pranjal, which is going to be, of course, GDP, which, in a sense, is going to also set the tone, in a sense, of what we'll be expecting in the union budget as well. What with, of course, indicators from the World Bank and IMF as well, showing that it's going to, be, of course, move beyond China this time around. Uh, if you could get those uh, those uh, figures in at this point of time, and Arun, if you could talk about the significance of uh, you know how GDP is going to actually bear. Uh, actually, uh, let me add to yeah, yeah, you yeah. mentioned IMF. Uh, mm. Arun, it'll be good to know your views on the projections that IMF has made for uh, the region as well as for India. See, the IMF has no independent ways of projecting India's economic growth apart from India's own national uh, authorities. So ours. Central Statistics Office is a primary source of figures for India's growth. And uh, they have put a conservative figure for the current economic year, mm -hmm. so 6.5%, even lower than what the RBI thought would be, or 6.7%. Now, this actually makes it even more likely that next year will show a little spurt in economic growth. If your baseline is uh, poor... Mm -hmm. next, year, next year, they projected 7.3. Yeah, so that is uh, likely. Yeah. But the main thing is, we have to get our investment up. Today, the investment rate, which is the gross fixed capital formation as a share of your total GDP, is today at an all-time, well, the lowest since 2003-04. Now, it was at a peak 38%. Investment was 38% of GDP. Now, fixed capital formation is around 26.4% of GDP when you measure both in current prices. Now, this has to go up if growth has to be sustained. That's an absolutely critical point, Arun. I agree. I think that kick-starting the new investment cycle, uh, which has has gone down over the last decade or so, uh, and I think this government has been trying very hard to bring it back, but it is being stalled by several issues, including uh, NPAs, which have uh, uh, not allowed the right kind of borrowers to come into the market. What do you think uh, will be the priority of the government uh, in this budget, which could perhaps be the last budget before elections, uh, for kick-starting this investment because this is politically important and of course uh, absolutely a must for the economy. So it is actually private uh, investment, basically household, meaning unorganized sector industry as well as household, which are holding back on investment. Corporate investment uh, actually is not all that poor. Mm. So how will you get the households to invest, unorganized industry to uh, invest? So I think affordable housing has been a major preoccupation with this government. And it is good uh, both politically as well as economically. People like to have own homes. They like getting subsidy from the government for building homes. Mm. So if the government extends the scheme it already has to give some subsidy from the budget for affordable I think uh, that is uh, something we should uh, hope to see. Because if you build more homes, it will also create demand for cement, steel, construction, labor, a whole lot of things which will in further push up a momentum to economic growth. So mm. that is something the budget can do. But the other things, you know, if you will, uh, ending rural distress will be a major political goal in this budget. The government must be seen to be doing something to address the farmers' issues. So investment in, say, uh, rural storage, uh, completing the rural electrification drive, uh, the rural road building, these are the things which will finally make it possible for food processing, uh, general agro-processing industry to take place. Now, farmers incomes cannot really go up by jacking up your minimum support prices mm. beyond a point because these have to be in line with global prices and you cannot keep them artificially high without incurring a huge cost. So then if your prices cannot go up, then how does the farmer get a better price? By being able to capture the value of all that he produces. Now a whole lot of stuff, particularly for fruits and vegetables, goes waste. Mm. If that can be avoided, his income will go up. He'll have an incentive to produce more. And similarly, uh, if you know, to take an example, cotton in Gujarat is a very profitable crop, mostly because the first act of value addition in cotton, that is ginning, removing the seed from that fluffy uh, ball that comes out, is done right there in the village, because Gujarat has rural power. And when the ginning is done in the village, there is forward visibility for the farmer as to what is the price that is output actually is produced actually come so the connect to the market is much better yes ha. both information and uh, yes. uh, fiscally so the building that market linkage right should be a prime focus in agriculture okay and that is something that the government uh, 
hopefully we'll try to address mm. in this budget. Mm -hmm. But that, that electronic uh, agricultural market plan which was announced a couple of years ago, will that be part of this? See, if you are in some uh, remote, unconnected village in Bihar, even if you throw your phone, you know what the price in the market is. How do you take your produce there? Mm. So unless there is physical connectivity and the means of transporting your produce and mm -hmm. physically reaching that market, mm. this information is useless. Absolutely. All right. While we're talking, of course, about the farming sector, about the agricultural sector, we're also bringing up those visuals there, uh, those graphics there for you. Of course, as you can see, uh, we saw a peak, of course, of 4.9 and after that uh, sliding down of the figures. And that is, in fact, something that perhaps we'll be seeing uh, the government focus on what with of course we are continuously saying it's an election year it's going to be crucial although Prime Minister Modi did say that the common man does not expect freebies so we are not going to be giving a populist budget is at least the indication at least from him that we've caught but we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, the optics something else and what in reality we do see isn't it Pranjal uh, and talking about the various sectors that we'll be focusing on uh, clearly, the markets also uh, looking forward to the economic survey. It's been, of course, on a, on a high uh, in the past few days, and today it's hit an all-time high again, Sensex and Nifty both. Um, so we'll uh, wait and see if after the economic survey that trend continues. Uh, but very.